Hey fam, Danny here. How are you today? Well, I wanted to get into The Deviant, Issue 5, James Tinian. And I've been doing a lot on this book. I, basically, I think we've done every issue thus far. And I'm really loving this book. It's really, really deep. It's a lot of themes. It's, it, it is mature, so... But let's let's dig in. So in issue five, we kind of open up. Well, we don't kind of. We actually open up with a flashback. It's in 1999. And Michael and his friend... Sorry, I thought I heard something. Michael and his friend are looking at pictures and his friend has called up these pictures that the deviant killer was allegedly looking at and it is gay you know pornography and michael is kind of you can see he's suppressing his emotions and how he feels about looking at this and his friend you know he asked his friend at one point he says you know you're you you looked for this and he said you know just be quiet i'm trying to get in the mind of a killer and then he says he makes a statement you know you're not gonna let me look at this and he's and i'm gonna say f word and in this situation when i say f word i mean a derogatory term for people in the lgbt community and he says, you're not going to let me look at this F word stuff by myself. And once again, we really have, you know, we see the the ugly head of homophobia and not in, su in this story, throughout this story, we see it in subtle forms and we see it in not so subtle forms. But it's weaved all through this story. And it also shows to me how different the journey can be for different people in the community. You have, you know, obviously, you know, you're looking at this one person, his friend, and he, his way of dealing with this is, is basically, you know, well, I'm not going to look at this, you know, blah, blah, blah type of stuff, you know, but you're looking at it and you don't have to be looking at it. And, you know, he's looking and there's a page of pictures that, you know, he's looking at. So it's like, he's basically trying to go the opposite of like, okay, I would never be this way because this way is bad. And then you have Michael who is trying to suppress his emotions. He's feeling these feelings and he's learning that there's people in the world that are going to hate him and mistreat him for having these feelings. So it's just such a complicated thing. And then, and then compound that with the fact that we're talking about young people who are already going through so much, whether it be psychologically, whether it be physically, mentally and now they're having these feelings and realizing that okay there's a whole like I said a whole world out there a whole there a whole group of people that are going to treat me differently for it so they continue looking at these pictures and you know Michael gets the idea of going to the house and his friend is like, well, the actual, what we're going to say, if you know you're Stephen King, you know, because I'm, I'm trying, I cannot stand the whole word thing, but I try to do my best to be good. So we're just going to say red rum. If you don't know what I mean, you know, um, look it up or you could just write it and look it in the mirror and you'll know what I mean. But anyway, you know, his friend lets him know that this is not where the red rum occurred, but you know, Michael wants to go there anyway because he lived there. So they're in the house. They break in the house. And Michael, you know, it's like, this wouldn't be a bad place to, you know, live or whatever. And his friend is like, what? Because, I mean, it's all obviously, you know, people have vandalized it. They've written derogatory words, including the F1 that, you know, we talked about earlier in, in the home. And so it's, it's a mess. So his friend is looking at him like, what are you talking about? Like, what do you see? And so he's like, Michael's like, I want to do something. So he takes out a Christmas hat and he puts it on top of his friend's head. And his friend's like, I want to leave. This is freaking me out. And Mike's like, no, wait, wait. And we see a tear come down his friend's eyes and he's, and we see Michael pulling some Christmas lights out of his book bag. So we don't know. And we see kind of like the light shining in the window, almost like time passing, passing by. In fact, I'll 
you know, show you guys the page, the actual page. This is them entering the house. And I'll, I'll have pictures on my um, Instagram. And this is the moment where he puts the um, the hat on his head and everything. And so he's, he's frightened, obviously. So we don't really know whether or not he created recreated the red rum or he just scared his friend or what we don't know because we speed back up to present time and we see him sitting like in the hospital after the beating he he received and you know the police officer asking him would do you understand he's like yeah you know you think i i committed red rum and then with story we get you know it you know it'll we'll be back next month so this is really a deep story as far as a mystery goes because we have Michael, this former comic book writer who is talking to this guy who is in prison for, for these, for committing, you know, these red rums, but he's saying that he's innocent and Michael's story is, is really not about, he's lets him know it's really not about me proving. I'm not trying to prove your innocence. I'm really trying to understand. And we get this reciprocal relationship between the two of them where they're trying to understand each other. We have his boyfriend, Derek, who's trying to be there for him. But it's very difficult because Michael's very closed off and a very complicated person, obviously. So there's a lot of moving parts here. We have this police officer who's entered in the story. We have an ex-police officer who actually arrested our, you know, our person who's in prison. So there's a lot of moving parts here, but I feel like there's two stories because there's also, not only is there the mystery part of the story, but there's also the part of just discovering who you are and that whole journey of trying to navigate your life and your feelings in a world that is often not accepting of that. And so it, it's humanizing it and it's doing it not in a heavy handed way, but it's, it's really like the writing James Tinian is just so awesome. And this writing is so good and so empathetic, caring, where he's really gotten, he's really gotten it right. If anybody who has had this journey and has had friends who have had this journey and, and know how, just how difficult often it can be. He, I, I feel like he nailed it for, you know, there's no, no other way. So I just think there's two stories here and it, you know, and it's just really, it's just really deep and you don't really see that a lot, you know, as far as like the, getting actually into the psyche and especially as a young person seeing it from a, a younger person's point of view all the way to his adulthood and then like I said throwing this mystery into it so this is this is a book like I've, I've said it every time I've talked about it I highly recommend it you know it it's just like I said it, it you'll you'll love it I don't I don't know why you wouldn't if you like his writing and like I said it's just such a great great, great story. So be back soon and talk to you guys soon. And um, as always, stay different. Let me know what you think about this story in the comments. If you're reading it, if you would think about reading it, just, just let me know what you're thinking. I'd be very interested. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.